get my six. Listen for tree knocks too, because I heard one just before I started recording. We're going to uh, <clears throat> attempt to lure them in this evening with a bit of bait and switch. I will explain. So I'm actually gonna stack all that firewood. I split that the other day. I usually don't leave it on the ground that long, but if you saw the video from yesterday, you know why I got sidetracked. We had company. Hearing like a yelp, a yelping. And it wasn't company of the human form. That thing we saw running up the hill just right here certainly wasn't human. So I'm going to do the old bait and switch here. I'm gonna stack that wood, but I'm walking up here backwards as I've done before in the past because we can often get really close to certain things. Your footsteps in the woods. Of course, you know I can't look. Gotta make them think I'm not looking. So you look for me. That's what get my six means. So I thought I saw something, so I did look that time. All right, so anyway, I'm coming up here to kind of just make my presence known. And then I'm gonna go back down there and stack that wood. And what I'm hoping is that I can get them to come in, like get their attention up here, just kind of doing a little walk up here close to the woods, see if we can get their attention, and then see if they'll actually come down here again uh, to watch me stack the wood. And I'm gonna tell you a couple things that I think might you might like to hear. Okay, so I'm seeing some deer up here. Oh, there's a bunch of deer. It's like one, two, three, four. So those were deer, four deer. But I heard something walking in the woods down here lower. Perhaps, potentially, he, she, it, or they we're stalking these deer. They might be out hunting. So, so sometimes I, I used to wish that I kept a little notebook beside me at times when I watch movies or documentaries. I talked about this a couple weeks ago uh, because sometimes I'll hear a line in a movie that just really makes a lot of sense. There goes those deer. You see them up there? And I quoted a line from a movie I watched recently with Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe. What was it called? Uh, it's about where the... It's based on a true story. Denzel Washington's character was like the first black... Um, kingpin slash mob boss uh, in America. <clears throat> yeah, the, the, that sort of organized crime, historically, mafia type stuff had been run by uh, people of Italian descent, Italian Americans. Uh, his boss, he was like the driver for a mob boss who was of Italian descent, but he died and, and Denzel Washington's character took over the, the, the whole business. And uh, it was really interesting. They were getting... I think it was heroin directly from Vietnam because he had a cousin that was uh, deployed in Vietnam. This was during the Vietnam War and they were shipping it back. Uh, there's something back there that I couldn't see. I can hear it. So we have company. The deer went that way. They're up there. This was not a deer. So keep, keep your eyes and ears open. Uh, so anyway, 
he, he, he had a more pure product because he wasn't lacing it with rat poisoning and whatever those people do that, that, that deal with that crap. And, uh, and he could give it for a lower price because he was getting it, you know, directly from Southeast Asia. But there was a line in the movie, this is the point of it, where he was still, you know, trying to make everybody know he was the boss now. And one of his mentors told him, said, uh, you can, there's my Bigfoot Sasquatch hunting partner there. What's up, kitty? She's on a trail of something. What is it, kitty? Said, uh, says, look, you can, you can be successful and have enemies or you can, uh, be nice and have friends. And I thought, man, so the next day, my point of that is, is I got the notebook and I kept it, still keep it there. And so I watch a lot of, uh, I like to watch documentaries on YouTube about successful people. I have the opposite of a crab mentality. You know, we talked about that. That crab mentality is, you know, people, the attitude of, well, if I can't have it, you, you can't either. Uh, in regard to any, like, nice things. Uh, or even success. And a lot of people will go out of their way trying to destroy people who, you know, are successful, who they view as successful. Um, you know, and uh, I'm going to quote the previous president, and this is not because I like him and this is not because I dislike him but this is because the, he's a he's a businessman and he understands business very well uh, but I remember reading something he said once uh, about as you as you're making your way up the ladder of success you're going to find that a lot of your friends fall off along the way because they will just become insanely jealous of you and uh, anybody watching who has enjoyed success with pretty much anything has seen that, you know, a lot of folks, they, they'll come across as if they like you and they may genuinely, gen genuinely like you as long as you're staying in your place, staying in your lane, as we call it in the military. Uh, and it's generally just a little bit beneath where they view themselves, their status. But if you start, you know, climbing that ladder, Hey, now, you know, they're not going to like you so much because wait a minute now, you just passed me up as far as income goes or title, whatever. And then that crab, crab mentality will kick in. Um, you know, talking about how maybe you got lucky. That's why you're successful. Uh, you knew the right people. You cheated somehow. You took advantage of, of others. You know, for you to have won, that means other people had to have lost. Uh, it's not the case. There's enough success in this world for everybody. Uh, just you've got to go out there and find it. You can't expect it to come to you. And you're certainly not going to find it if you're always harping on the guy or the girl that's out there getting his or hers. Okay? So uh, I'm saying this because I like to watch documentaries on people who are successful. Uh, because I I look at it and I'm like, okay, what did that person do? to get to where they are that I might be able to do myself. Yep, I see that. Let me get out of your way here a little bit. <clears throat> are there any behaviors that, that I could model in my life, in my career, uh, to get you know further ahead of where I am now and where that person is? Uh, again, opposite mentality of the, the crab approach, the crab mentality. So with this said, uh, I, I watch a lot of boxing documentaries, um, and not so much the fights. I do enjoy watching the fights, even though I've never boxed. I'm sure I would not be any good at it. Uh, his face ain't much, but it's the only one I got. So I'm not stepping in the ring. Um, I would enjoy the training. Um, but anyway, I like to listen to successful boxers, uh, talk because they, they, they have so much knowledge and so much wisdom. Um, you know, of course, the greatest of all time being Muhammad Ali. I could just listen to that guy talk forever. And I watched a two hour long documentary on him last night, but I've really been getting into this Tyson Fury guy. And uh, I'm going to stack the wood here in a minute. Just a couple quotes from Tyson Fury. And since I keep that notebook, <laughs> obviously my wife found it too. And she started a 
butter, eggs, bread. She started a grocery list. Um, but I got a couple quotes, and I'm going to stack the wood, and you keep watching for him, her, it, or they. Uh, Tyson Fury, he's never lost. He's a giant of a man, six foot nine. When he's in shape, he's like 260 pounds. In his last fight, he was 277. Uh, a lot of his competitors, opponents, I would watch where they were interviewing pre-fight interviews. They had crab mentalities. Uh, they were saying, you know, the only reason you're so good is because you're, you're so big. Well, a guy that knows quite a bit about boxing, you've probably heard of him, his name's Mike Tyson. He disagrees with that. He says that Tyson Fury is actually a really good fighter. He's a great fighter. And if you watch him, he is. So it's, you know, that's the crab mentality of the opponent. Let me tell you, those guys are already beaten. If you're stepping into the ring and you think your your competitor is, is somehow uh, got lucky and is better than you because of this, that, or the other, you've already lost. Because if that's true, well, you can't... Po okay, if he's so good because he's 6'9 and weighs almost 300 pounds and you're 6'2 and weigh 220, you've already lost. Why are you wasting your time fighting a guy? But anyway, and he proves it by beating people. But I watched a really neat interview uh, between him and the former heavyweight champion, the guy from Russia, Vladimir Kuchkov or Kuchko. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it, but that guy... Uh, was the champion longer than anybody in history. 12 years. He had 25 successful defenses of his of his championship title. Tyson Fury is the only one that beat him. Um, the, the Russian guy, he had this strategy, and he was a big guy. And he's still alive, but he doesn't fight anymore. He's like 6'6", 250. And so his strategy was to come at you with a 1-2 and then tie you up. And so basically, he would beat you on points, the most of the fights would go 15 rounds or 12 rounds. Um, he one two and then tie you up, so you couldn't hit him back. And he was so big and he was so strong, people just couldn't get him off to to score points on him. And so him and Fury were talking, and Fury told him, he says, "I'm going to beat you, and I'm going to tell you how exactly how I'm going to do it." Because what everybody else would do when they would fight the Russian, uh, they would try to knock him out. Because I guess the attitude was, well, you know, I'm only going to be able to get a couple shots in on this guy because of his fighting style. I better make him count. I better get him right on the button. I better knock him out. No one could do it. <clears throat> so Tyson Fury told him, he says, I'm not going to, you know, he told him, you know, I'm going to knock you out. But I'm, I'm definitely, I'm going to outbox you. And that's what he did. He, he it went the distance, and then Tyson won by overwhelming decision. He won every round because he told the guy, he says, I am big and I am strong, and you're not going to be able to, to tie me up like that. Come in with your one, two, and tie me up. He says, I'll push you off, and I'm going to box your face off, and I'm going to – and that's what he did. So he got in this guy's head. So, so there's, you could see the Russian guy just lost his cool, and he told him, he says, you're crazy. You're bipolar or something. You're mentally ill. And Tyson Fury, and this is another thing I'm going to talk about, he does suffer from mental illness. He has his whole life. Uh, but Tyson Fury told him, he says, yeah, I'm crazy. If I wasn't crazy, I wouldn't be great. Isn't that something? Not that I think you necessarily need to be insane or be crazy to be great. I mean, maybe it helps. I don't know. But – uh Did you hear that tree knock? Okay, so anyway, Tyson Fury ended up retiring that guy. But here's the other thing, because uh, Tyson Fury, not just as the heavyweight champion of the world, but he's a big advocate for mental health. I just love hearing this guy talk. Uh, he's struggled with depression his whole life, addiction. Um, he, he retired once, and then he made an amazing comeback. But when he retired, he was drinking and drugging all the time. He got up to 400 pounds. But he wanted to make a change, and he did. And, and so he did an interview with Joe Rogan you, on a podcast. You probably <clears throat> might have seen it. Go check it out if you haven't. But he said something that was key there. Uh, he says, I don't suffer mental health when I'm active, when I have a goal. And I thought, man, that's really amazing because he, he was going to the professionals seeking help and all this stuff, but nothing seemed to be working for him. And he couldn't seem to, you know, get off the drugs and the alcohol. Uh, terrible mix, as he says in this interview, for people who have mental health issues. And we all know that. It's not rocket science. But I thought that was so key. He says, I don't suffer mental health when I'm active, when I have a goal. It's not the cure-all, but 
if you find yourself sometimes just feeling down, being bummed out, you got the blues, uh, just just get busy doing something. I mean, you know, uh, I work out all the time, distance runner, but I love splitting firewood and I don't have to do it. Uh, and I could even buy my own firewood and we're actually going to update our heating and cooling system here this coming spring with the ductless stuff. Uh, but I'm telling you, <clears throat> there are times, even myself, when, and I'll ask myself, what is wrong in this moment? This is like a Zen technique that I picked up from uh, Eckhart Tolle, probably mispronouncing his name too. But uh, if you just stop and ask yourself in this minute right now, in this very moment, what is lacking? nothing got a beautiful wife beautiful son we've got perfect health excellent health uh money in the bank food in the house bills are paid uh, you know i've reconnected with some some long lost family members this year and it's been wonderful uh right now in this moment all is well uh so just remember that too and get out and get active move around makes you feel better but that's where firewood comes into play here. It's not just about heating the house. All right, keep your eyes on it. I know you heard that. My wife would kill me if she knew I was going to do this. And I just thought of it because I mentioned there about how, you know, life is just perfect. Uh, <clears throat> I mentioned the beautiful wife. You, you've you seen her. Um, but just this weekend, she went to a like a Christmas party with a bunch of her friends. So I took her out, bought her a new dress, some nice new shoes. And she got her hair cut. She has like long bangs now. Well, I guess uh, I caught her taking pictures of herself with her new outfit and her new haircut with my phone. So if you don't believe my wife's smoking hot, check this out. <laughs> Told you. How can I ever be unhappy with that as my partner, right?
Well, they're clearly tree knocking like crazy. And I thought I saw a movement up here behind this tree line. And I'm hearing footsteps back this way. I get the feeling they're trying to surround me. They're coming in just before dark. Watch up in here too. Where is it? Over on that side of those trees. Watch right in here. This is chestnut oak. It's a pain in the butt sometimes to split because it's got all kinds of knots in it. <clears throat> Won't burn it for a year or two. It's going to burn great when we do burn it.
Just think about Tyson Fury and what he said about having goals. Think about how many folks are just out there with no purpose in life. Why would you get out of bed every day? You know, and uh, Muhammad Ali said that everyone has a purpose. All things have a purpose. The trees have a purpose. Just most people don't know what their purpose is because most people don't try to find it. It's out there, but it's not going to come to you. You got to go to it. They all fell off, but there was like a half a dozen termites on here. <clears throat> People often ask why we keep the wood so far away from the house. Keep the bugs far away from the house. heavy.
Well, it appears as if they're in position. They've taken their time. We heard the knocks, growls, howls, yelps. They're just waiting for dark now. It's still a, maybe another 30 minutes away. Well, I could wait for another 30 minutes. But you see what I have waiting on me in the house? I think I'm going inside. Should I decide to come back out later after dark? I'll get it on camera for you. Show it to you next time. See you then.